Good morning, everybody, Good morning. and welcome. Uh, I have a few notices before we begin with prayer and the parade. Um, the usual Zoom meetings for prayer uh, carry on at, uh, uh, on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. and coffee mornings on Zoom at 10.30 on Thursdays. We've had details of a Christmas shoebox scheme in Derby. Please see Penny if you'd like to be involved. Some people from this church are meeting for a meal at the Grouse and Claret in Rosalie on Saturday, October the 2nd. Everyone is welcome to come. Please see Mike Haynes for details. And a reminder that the offertory dish is in the Crush Hall rather than pass the plate around at the moment. Mike is going to uh, fill us in on last night's uh, Harvest Hoedown before we begin in prayer. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to let you know that yesterday afternoon, evenings, um, uh, Harvest Hoedown uh, with uh, Tom Pilkington's Heads and Tails Band was absolutely wonderful. We had a fantastic time. But I was, I was completely gobsmacked by how much money there was in the bucket. We raised over 200 pounds, and that's just incredible. <laughs> of course, anybody who wasn't there last night has the opportunity to add to that total, and that would put such a smile on my face, so thank you very much indeed. Let us pray. Holy blessed Lord, at this celebration of harvest, we give thanks for this garden planet, pledging to till it with wisdom and to care for it with humility. For this we gather, for this we worship. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. How lovely to see you all here to celebrate the harvest together, to celebrate the harvest, not just of farm and of field, but of hard work and commitment and dedication by the young people in our Girls and Boys Brigade. It's lovely to see your families with us today. Today, as we gather together to celebrate our Harvest Festival here in church and with people on Zoom, good morning, we'll be spending some time asking ourselves, what are the next steps for us? In a time when making plans has felt like an act of foolish hope, when holidays have been cancelled and celebrations unable to happen, when returning to a way of life which, with much more freedom seems on the horizon, we're going to look back at where we have been, where we are now, and where we hope to go. You might say that that is the attitude of everyone who plans for a harvest. Taking a look back and thinking what has gone well and what has gone badly and what can be learnt to go forward. As we worship God today, you may find, you feel your own steps becoming clearer, perhaps a prompting to try something new or get more involved in a community project. So as we step into worship together, let's step into fellowship as we lament, worship, listen and respond to our loving God. I'm going to read just a few verses from Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and seen your power and your glory. 
Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. If you'd like to turn to the red hymn book, which should be underneath the seat in front of you, if that makes sense, it says Singing the Faith on the front. We're going to sing 125, 1, 2, 5, praise and thanksgiving, Father, we offer. And let's say a prayer together. Lord God, it is good to see each other here today, to be able to join together and sing our hymns of praise. And in this hymn we have acknowledged so many good things. The harvest of field and orchard and hedgerow. But also the harvest that we seek to share in so many different ways. Talking about neighbours and children, wisdom and knowing care. Lord, we thank you for our friends and our families, the people who make so much difference to our lives. And today, especially, we thank you for our children and young people. And perhaps many in our congregation will think of their children and grandchildren, maybe even great-grandchildren. Lord, we thank you for each one. And we pray that each and every person here amongst our families and our friends will know your love surrounding them, your presence guiding them each and every day. Amen. As I said a few moments ago, we're going to think for a little while about looking back. And I'm sure that um, some of you will remember that we didn't have a harvest festival here in church last year. We were on Zoom. I was sitting at my desk feeling very isolated from everybody. Where have we been? The psalmist cries out to God and asks, how long he must wait. Will God forget him forever? And asks, where is God? And I'm sure that some of us over the last 18 months or so were saying, how long, God, must we go through this? Will we have to wait forever? And that is what we call lament, where we cry out in sorrow and say, not it's not fair, but I can't deal with this, God. Can you help me? And lament leads us into a closer relationship with God because we realise we can't hide anything from him. Today, as we come together, we perhaps are ready to admit that we've been carrying pain and struggle and grief and disappointment and weariness. So before we look ahead, we'll look back and name the parts of our life which have been hard for us and have weighed heavily upon us. Here on the communion rail, if you've been bright-eyed, you will notice that there are two lots of words. And on this side it says, look back, in large letters. And the, there are post-it notes and pens and some hand sanitizer there, if you'd like to just listen to the song that we're going to hear now from a group called Rend Collective. It's a song called Weep With Me. And come and write your sorrows, your laments on a post-it note and stick it to the, um, the words, look back, so that we can just spend a little time thinking for a moment of the things that we've missed the things that have made us sad over the last 18 months. Thank you, everybody. We have missed people. 
We have missed holidays and friends. We have missed so much. And there is grief written on these post-it notes. And we remember as a church family that there are people who we don't see anymore and we miss them. We miss Andrew and Jane and David. We miss a dad, an auntie, family and friends, a nana, school. Sorry, we miss mum very much. Here's a prayer written by the Northumbria, Northumbria community. And after I say, today I believe, would you please repeat after me, today I believe. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials, and now, tired as I am, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when the time was ripe. And though you be silent now, today I believe. Today I believe. Lord God, as we come before you, bringing those things which have caused us sorrow, this last 18 months. Yet we believe that you walk alongside us, that we know your companionship and your friendship, and we pray that we would always know your presence. Amen. Amen. So we've looked back. What's happening today? What are the important places to us in our community? What do we love about Matlock? Anything? Friends. Friends. Yeah. Hills. Hills. I've been to... It certainly is. I did enquire of someone when I first came to be Matlock, what is it that keeps everybody looking so young? And they told me it was walking uphill. <coughs> what else do you love about Matlock? The park. The, park. the church. The church, yes. There's lots of things to love about Matlock, including each other. What challenges do you think we are facing as a community? Also the hills, yes. <laughs> yes, especially with the recent sewage problems. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Our community, sorry? Growing older. Mm. Yeah, we are. Whether we like it or not, we're all growing older. Keeping young people engaged is a challenge. Yeah. Our community has been facing lots of challenges, especially 
with the uh, after effects of COVID-19, hasn't it? We've not been feeling like we used to do. After the service, if you want to go to the back of church, there's a map on the wall of Matlock and the surrounding area, just above Phil's head, if you're wondering where it is. Yeah, look at the map and think about the community in which you live. Think about the good stuff and the challenges that we face and ponder how we might go forward today. I think some people have got some harvest gifts to bring forward um, which are going to be given to the food bank in town. So if you'd like to bring them forward, would you please do that now? In years gone by, we used to have a huge display in church with lots of fruit and vegetables. And then we often wondered what we would do with it at the end. But today, we bring forward tins and bottles and jars and packets and offer them to the food bank to help people who aren't able to afford perhaps as much as we are. And I'm deeply grateful for all these gifts. We'll just have a short prayer. Father of abundance, in the same spirit as the widow who gave all that she had as an offering, we bring forward these gifts that they may be a small act of hope that you will use to bring comfort to those who most need it. May our community stand alongside those people who have to use the food bank each week. And as we look around us and take our next steps on the path God has ordained for us, we commend this offering to you, Lord, and pray that it will bring comfort and joy to other people. Amen. And now we're going to turn back to our hymn books and sing the song that the Girls' Brigade have chosen for today. It's Shine, Jesus, Shine. Please be seated. And now we come to the moment where we're going to hand out the awards for our young people who have been working hard in the brigades over the last year or two years or however long it might be. And I know that you met over Zoom for quite a long time before coming back face to face. And uh, the person who's going to present the awards and the person who's going to receive it are going to stand sideways on so that you can all see rather than just someone's back. And uh, I hope you're going to give the congregation a big, big smile when you've got your award before you go back to your seat. Thank you. be back here with you all at our Harvest Festival in the parade service today. Also in Girls' Brigade, we are celebrating 80 years of Girls' Brigade in Matlock. You wouldn't you... have thought it, would you? <laughs> I look good for my age. <laughs> Due to COVID, we've been unable to celebrate as we would have liked to, but we will arrange something for a company evening on a Wednesday to mark the occasion. And I would like to point out that it's actually Matlock Girls' Brigade that is 80 and not me <laughs> or any of our leaders. Although we do have a combined experience of Girls' Brigade of nearly 270 years between us. And now we'll present our awards. The first one's going to go to Olivia, who's done one year service. Olivia. There we are, Olivia. Give them a big, big smile. <laughs> the second is to Joseph, one year service. Well done, Joseph. Bed. Yes, 
service. Sarah's one year service and one year Bible because Sarah attends the church, the Catholic church below. There we go, Sarah. Well done, you. Isaiah, one year service. Oh. Herman. <laughs> well done, Isaiah. Sophie for two years service. Hello, Sophie. Patrick with two years service and two years Bible. Hello, Darcy, three years service and three years Bible. Hello, Darcy. Eliza, five years service and five years of church service. <laughs> Alex, five years service. Mum's coming. I know that. <laughs> well done, Alex. <laughs> Isabel with six years service. Uh, there are a lot of children that aren't here at the moment today, but they will get theirs when we present them at Girl Today. Okay, oh. thank you. Yes, our award ceremony has been postponed from the 4th of July, which was to celebrate. 18 months really of zooming and keeping in touch with our young people from both girls brigade and boys brigade and our boys brigade is now boys brigade and girls association which is lovely for families because they can send them to either or both so that's why you'll get some people who receive something from girls brigade and boys brigade which is absolutely super so our first award goes to sarah who's got her one year badge her anchor membership badge and her Yellow Activity Award. So, if you like to come up, Sarah. <laughs> Baird, one year badge, anchor membership badge, and green activity. Salute. Salute. <laughs> Olivia, one year badge, anchor membership badge, and green activity badge. <laughs> and Joseph, whose three year badge, red and blue awards, that represents two years, of course and he will be promoted to the juniors, so hence he has on the blue jumper. Okay, Joseph, it's your turn now. <laughs> Our juniors, Rachel, one year badge, junior membership, and junior bronze badge. And she's not here today. <clears throat> she's not here. Patrick, junior, five-year badge, silver, gold, which is the highest award for juniors, and promotion to the company section. Stand back. Salute. Thank you. The categories that we are moving into now have changed slightly, and the anchors and the juniors do all of these, and over the next couple of years, the company and seniors will be doing these. So it's get active, get adventurous, get creative, get into the Bible, get involved and get learning. And uh, we've had excellent support from Boys Brigade headquarters, second to none really, over the last 18 months with Zoom virtual sessions, outdoors and indoors activities, but absolutely fantastic things on the internet, which I've not been really so good at, but I've got splendid people like Margaret, who's really good on computers, and so it's called BB at Home, 
and there are two children who have done so well that they get a special medallion for having done between them almost 150 activities at home and it's brother and sister Olivia and Joseph who you've seen already and they have got so many pictures of their achievements all done really at home through their parents as well as on Thursday evenings as well. So they get these special medallions to hang round their necks today. So would you like to both come up, Olivia and Joseph? Jade, can you help them put them on? Then just come and stand in the middle and let's give you a clap because they're unique. Oh, go on, turn around. There you are. Okay, moving on to the company and seniors, we have Ollie with a nine-year badge, Recreation 3, Skills 3, Community 3, Discovery badge and promotion to Corporal and to the seniors, Ollie Pilkington. <laughs> Joseph here today, he rejoined us and will be back again in two weeks, which is lovely to hear. Tom, 10-year badge, Recreation 4, Skills 4, Community 4 and Promotion to Sergeant. <laughs> Luke, 11 year badge, Recreation 4, Skills 4, Community 4, and Promotion to Sergeant. <laughs> and alongside Luke would have been Daniel, but he, for his Queen's badge, is doing his membership of a football team and they're actually playing this morning so he couldn't be here but I know his mum is very very proud of his achievements in Boys Brigade so Daniel will be 11 year badge recreation for skills for community for and sergeant and then today is very special because we have to present the president's badges in front of our church congregation this is what it always suggests. Do not present these in your company. They must be in front of the church congregation. And we have three young men who have all gained their president's badges over the last few months. This is the second highest award you can win in the Boys Brigade. And the good news is they're all going to go for their Queen's badge, like Danny's this morning by being a member of a football team as part of the things he has to do. And we often clean the car park and the entrance to the bottom door. We trim things, even with the barbecue going on. So that's one of the things we do for this church, which goes unseen, really. It's looking a bit of a mess at the moment, but it will be tidied over the next three weeks. So that's the sort of thing we do for this church. We sometimes come here and sort the chairs out put the hymn books out, we do lots of things, we, we brush and sweep out here, we brush and sweep downstairs where nobody goes, so there are lots of unseen things that these young people do as part of their devotion to the church and the boys brigade. So here goes, Tom, President Bob. Daniel isn't here, he gains his president's badge, so it's Luke, your president's badge. <laughs> and 
And the final award is for the annual presentation of the Peter Young Cup. Peter would have been the captain had he survived, but sadly died in his 20s, and I rushed into the job as running the juniors, and suddenly I've been here for all these years, just a few. But uh, this Peter Young Cup was presented by his wife, Polly, and is given each year for the person we consider of the older young people to have been, if you like, the winner. And we've been doing it in the recent years based on our judgment of uniform tidiness on a Thursday evening. And it's always a close call, but he'll be very surprised to receive this cup. But last year, 2020, the cup has been engraved for him, and it is Tom. Last of all, I'd like to pay tribute to uh, David Allen and Jane Hall, who sadly died just over a year ago, David, and as you know, Jane, just about three months ago. And those are two officers who I worked out, between them, had given 95 years service to our boys' brigade. We, we do miss them very, very much, but we carry on, but I'd like to sort of give a tribute to them for all the service they've given to the Boys Brigade. And I think we'd be allowed to clap because I think him up there would be proud of them. So give a round of applause for those people who are leading the Girls and Boys Brigade so faithfully all the way through all these years. We are so grateful to you. You're doing a great job. Thank you. And also to those parents who have helped their children navigate all the Zoom and all the everything else, who bring the children here week by week, now we're back in person, and have done so much in support and encouragement. Thank you very much indeed. And now, if you'd like to turn back to your hymn books, it's 645, and this is the Boys' Brigade hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life. Please be seated. And now we're going to have two short Bible readings for today. The first one is the parable of the lost sheep, and the second one is from Matthew 6 and tells us not to worry. Thank you. Luke chapter 15, verse 3. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Matthew 6, verses 25 to 33. This is why I tell you to not be worried about the food and drink you need in order to stay alive, or about the clothes for your bodies. After all, isn't life worth more than clothes? Look at the birds. Do they no, not 
sow seeds, gather a harvest, and put in barns. Yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth much more than birds? Can any of you live a bit longer by worrying about it? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon or in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe of you, you of little faith? So don't, so do not start worrying, where will my food come from, all my drink, all my clothes, these are the things, the pain, pain, pain. Pagans. Pagans are always concerned about your father in heaven. Mm. No, that you need all these things instead. Be concerned above everything else with the kingdom of God and with what the require of you and he will provide you with all these other things. Thank you to our four readers today. I wonder if any of you have ever been lost. There are one or two nods going round. Can you tell me what it felt like? Frightening, yes. Is that what you said, Mike? Panic. Panic, yes. It makes us panic, doesn't it, when we don't know where we are. It's a bit scary. How am I going to be find again, found again? There are things that happen to make us feel safe again. Perhaps somebody else comes and finds us. Or maybe we turn the map the other way around and realise where we are. <laughs> I think a lot of us have felt a bit lost over the past 18 months. And perhaps some of the things we've put on our Look Back poster have been about that. We have missed each other. We've missed meeting each other in Girls' Brigade and Boys' Brigade and in church. We've felt apart from our families and our friends. And especially if they live in different parts of the country or different parts of the world, we've not been able to see them like we usually would. This Bible story of the lost sheep, Jesus says, is something to tell us about what God is like. Are there things in this story, do you think, which give us clues about God? Well, I've noticed a few, so I'll tell you. And the first one is that he notices if we are lost. I imagine the Good Shepherd might have kept counting for quite a while before he realised that there was definitely one wrong, one gone. It's not easy to count 99 or 100 sheep. They all look rather alike, don't they? But the Shepherd notices, says Jesus, that one is missing. God notices, says Jesus if one is lost. And the second thing that Jesus suggests to us about God in this story 
is that we can't actually hide from him because he will search us out and find us wherever we have gone. And he doesn't give up. He keeps on looking. He realises if we're tired and he carries us to a place of safety. God, says Jesus, is excited when we are included again. And he is a God of celebration. He throws a party when we are found. That's pretty tremendous, isn't it? God throws a party when people are found. So what about that second reading? I love this reading. I often think about it when I look at the flowers in the garden or wildflowers in the field or flowers arranged in church or flowers received as a special gift. Those flowers that Jesus talks about. And he says that even Solomon, who the Bible, the Old Testament says, was the greatest king who ever lived, didn't look as beautiful or as handsome as the flowers in the field. Therefore, says Jesus, don't worry. I think that the laments we've shared earlier give us a clue to the amount we've been worried and anxious over the past months. I know I got totally sick of Zoom and really don't want to see it again. But I know that I will do. Jesus is encouraging us to offer our worries to God and we can do that because he cares for us. On Friday, I was sitting in church quietly on my own when I realised there was a noise by one of the windows And at first I thought it was outside. And then I noticed it was actually a butterfly fluttering by the window trying to get out. It was stuck. So I found a little pot and a piece of paper and I managed to get up on something so that I could reach. And I put the pot over the butterfly and slid the piece of paper between the pot and the glass so I could get it safely um, fastened in the pot and took it outside so it could fly away. I gave it freedom. It's not very well known, but from early days, the butterfly was a symbol of the resurrection. The chrysalis seems like a dead thing and a living being emerges from it, a bit like Jesus at Easter. Perhaps we could think of that as our emergence from the restrictions that we've been facing. Perhaps we can think of it as our embracing freedom once more. Or perhaps we as a church can think of a time when the message of the good news of Jesus has been kept quiet, but now we can set it free. There's another poster here which says, look forward. And there are post-it notes and pens again for you to write, think of something to write on it that you would like to do looking forward so that the good news of Jesus can be shared with more people. And you've got one minute, and I'm timing you, so come on quick. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for thinking of things that we can look forward to. And I hope and pray that as that butterfly was released, so we will be released to to do these things together and also to take the love of Christ outside and away from the church building into the community. Oh, there are some good things here that we're looking forward to, aren't there, Baird? 
and one's hugs and kisses. That is lovely. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for ourselves, our loved ones and community. As we look ahead, we ask that you will light the way for us and continue to draw us closer to you. Thank you for the members of our community who continue to serve in frontline services. We pray that you would give them rest and encouragement. Merciful God, we lift up our leaders to you as they guide our nation. We pray that you will give them wisdom, compassion and willing ears to listen. We pray that they will be able to find the balance of championing our country whilst being a caring and generous global neighbour. Gracious God, we pray for charity groups like Christian Aid and All We Can, for charity groups who work abroad and here in the UK, and we thank you for the partnerships that they set up with people so that they can flourish. We pray for them and all the people who take part. Creator God, we are sorry for the times when we've not looked after and protected the beautiful world you have given us. We pray for the Climate Change Conference taking place in Glasgow in November. We thank you for the commitment of the countries, organisations and campaigners coming together to inspire meaningful action to combat the climate crisis. We pray that it will be a marker in the sand and a significant step towards tackling the devastation caused by climate change. And lastly, Lord God, we pray for ourselves. We thank you for each and every person here today. We thank you that they are known to you and loved by you. And we pray that you would enable us as we go from here to take the good news of Jesus out into the communities in which we live and work so that there might be freedom for that news to fly where it wishes, so that people's lives will be touched. In his name, amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn is 130, without which you cannot have a harvest festival. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. And a blessing. May the God of all bless you and lead you as you take your next steps. May you know the loving guidance of Jesus Christ our Lord today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. <laughs>